The News Run on Off The Ball. With Gillette Labs. Get the ultimate shave for your money back. Neon Night Edition, available now. This is News Talk. Uh, hello, you're welcome along. So we've got a great show for you. Wednesday Night Rugby with a difference. We're going to chat to Martin Johnson, England World Cup winning captain, former coach as well. We have Champions League business once again. As we turn from Madrid to Milan, Kenny Cunningham is here in studio for the evening. And we will chat to David Wallstein as well, friend of the show of the New York Times. So the Oakland days, the team once upon a time of Billy Bean and Money Bull, are dropping the city. They're out of there. They're heading for the bright lights of Vegas. And there is uh, much anger, as you might imagine, in Oakland. So David will explain all. 53106, the text number. We're at Off The Ball on Twitter. Kenny Cunningham in studio. Hello. Evening, Joseph. How are you? I'm all good. I'm all good. Stick in your headphones there. Richie McCormack, hello to you. It's, I mean, it's, it's only Kenny's first time. He didn't know you had to put <laughs> in headphones. He's, he's a novice. He's Ricardo, a novice. Ricardo, how, how are, are you? Kenneth? You should ask, you know what? There's, there's, a, there's a nice, there's an interesting band developing among contributors to Off the Ball, Joe. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Mr. Wallstein has a musical background. I think he was involved in bands back in the 80s. Um, we all know of Lawrence Donegan's background as one of the members of the Blue Belts, mm-hmm. uh, who had a massive hit in the 80s. And Philippe Auclair as well has his own musical side projects going along too. So Oof. they're all they're all dipping their toe. Could have a little get together some evening. A little jam session, Joe. Exchange of ideas. <laughs> Kenny, yeah, would you be coming out left field? That's come out left field from Rich. That one. What's your musical background? Uh, <clears throat> oh, pathetic. Don't have a note in you. Pathetic. No. Uh, in terms of uh, playing, could you sing? The accordion. We all had to get that accordion. It's primary school. Do you remember it? Was that gone by the time you pitched yeah, up? Yeah, it was tin whistle. I had to share that accordion around the classroom. You know all of that. Saliva. Oh, God, it's desperate. Oh. Yeah, health and safety would have had a field day, Rich, back S- in the day. Saliva in an accordion. You, 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 well, you know you have to... <laughs> Were you spitting on it? Put in your mouth. An accordion. Yes, pass, it, pass it around the class. Everybody had to play it. You're bit. thinking of a, rec- have a bang recorder, of Ken. I'm oh, a recorder. A recorder, yeah. You Jesus. know what I meant. Rich, you know what I meant. I was, I was wondering what we, why you were playing side. that I think that's another North Side thing. Rich was bang on. He knew, he knew on where it was coming. <laughs> that's the name of the album, Joe. That is a good name for an album. Goodness that is a good me. name. Spitting on Accordions, the new album from Kenny Cunningham. Out now. There you go. There you go. Uh, so, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't. It wasn't musical. Tin Whistle. The usual keyboard lessons. Hated it. No, I'd much rather kicking a ball against a wall, to be honest with you. Although you say that now, Joe, I think given a given a choice, if I had to have a be skilled or talented in any one area, I'd I'd lean towards a musical instrument. Oh, I'm with you. It's a big regret. I did buy a keyboard a couple of years ago. I was like, right, this is it. I'm doing it. I'm and really just uh, couldn't. It's got to be natural, way. Joe. It's got to be natural. The lads used to bang away. Um, Andy Reid, oh, phenomenal uh, guitar well, player. Trapped didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was talking about his guitar playing, was he? <laughs> Trap. No, he could play, and and he loved it. He was he was all in, really, kind of focusing on all of that stuff. Shane Long, good. Alan as well. Lee, Alan Lee, Shane, yeah, yeah, a few of the lads, yeah, fantastic. Who from your vintage was good? <sighs> no, it was only it was only really I can remember on the on uh, on the instruments. The lads could sing. I mean, there were plenty of singers. Don't worry about that. Bobby Keane liked to sing. Everybody was interested in the. I wanted the stage. You know what I mean? Nobody wanted to be in the background banging away. Uh, one of the instruments in the shadows like everybody wanted to be front and centre so what was your uh, go to <laughs> what was your party piece oh I can't, I can't hardly <laughs> party piece can I remember. can hardly remember I can hardly yes, remember yeah. uh, lads could hold the tune Robbie's a great singer everybody chipped in great be no good if everybody was good at singing would it that wouldn't be any fun would it Rich <laughs> <laughs> do you know what Did you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've seen those clips doing the well they've, they've often done the rounds especially with the big Jack documentaries I think the one the most recent one as well of the parties around Italia 90 in Italy after the games oh, well, the one and who's front Berg. and centre Christa Berg yeah. is right there Christa yeah. Berg. very poignant well listen to this Christa Berg right now Now you've mentioned it me first Careful. ever co- and I go no nah, I'm going to throw it out there to hell with it First ever concert I went, and I wasn't big into my music um, uh, growing up, etc. No you know? kidding. Crystal Ball concert in Dublin must have been just before I went, 88, 89, that type of thing. Ended up there with a pal of mine in Dublin. I think it was the RDS he played there. Had a big fry up in my mas. Uh, we were in, <laughs> we were in Doris oh, Street at the time. Back to Headed over. This was a big <laughs> night out. This was a big night. So you had to start with the fry. You had how to did start you, with the big how fry. How did you bring up. it back to food? What did you have in the fry? No, it's no, relevant. It's relevant. <laughs> the, the fry is relevant. Had the fry. Ended up Christopher. 
20 minutes, half an hour into the concert, you know, just blah, 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 your stomach. <laughs> I thought, what's going on there? Oh, half an hour later, I'm chundering at the back of the, oh, no. the concert venue. Yeah, <laughs> literally threw up for the, re- for the rest of the Ooh. concert. A lot of people might say, what do you expect going to a Crystal Borg concert? But I literally physically <laughs> emptied <laughs> emptied my stomach. I, I wouldn't have thought Blame you... me, ma. Blame me, me ma. It was... Don't blame your mother. I reckon one of them sausages fell on the floor in the kitchen or something. She picked it up and slung it back in the past. Something, something happened. Something Third, happened. 30 second rule. Oh, first concert, disaster. Presume you wouldn't have been Christopher's target market. I doubt it was full of teenage boys, was it? No. What was his market? What was his market? Yeah, Rich, yeah. I think back then it was, er- it was everyone. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. it, this is the late 80s in Ireland whereby massive gigs don't happen every week like they do now. And we didn't get, you know, the massive superstars rolling in every week like Good we point, do now. Rich. So so a big gig was an event and mm-hmm. anybody and everybody would go to it. And even like, if you look back to footage from gigs in like in the 80s, go back to Sheems to Kush Lee, <clears throat> where it's like Leo Sayer or it's a bunch of like, it's a, it's the <laughs> Dublin City Ramblers or it's anybody. But everyone's mad into it because yeah. there just wasn't that same Tra- a trudge through of, of big acts True. through the country. Uh, okay, spoil it now. Spoil it now a little bit. You can pick Aren't and choose. Just, I can't open Twitter at the moment, but for seeing somebody else at Bruce Springsteen over the last uh, <laughs> couple of days. Did you venture along at oh, all? I got caught. Got caught in the traffic last night. Okay. Pier Street, disaster. I stuck there for about 40 minutes. Would you be a Bruce man? Do you know what? Um, I do actually, yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of time for him. Um, I think he's very, uh, quite an interesting uh, character as well, but. I actually went to see, <laughs> talking about um, Food. Brian, Brian Sorry. brought us there, uh, uh, Brian Kerr brought us, the international team uh, brought us there back in the back in the day, we were coming in for a camp, we met in Dublin, um, jumped on the coach at the airport, whoosh, ended up at Bruce Springsteen for about an hour before heading up to Monaghan, I think we were booked into a hotel in uh, Monaghan that night, but um, yeah, and the thing about him I remember, he's, he's on stage bang on time. Now, generally yeah. speaking, Rich, you're thinking, what, mm. 45 minutes an hour, you know, support, yeah. you lay on. He was bang. We went in there. We didn't know he was on. We were like, lads, we're having a few drinks after 20 minutes before we realised it was actually uh, him on stage. And he did a long set, but we didn't stay for the, to be fair, lads had been thrown a few back earlier in the day. So, so you, it was, we, you, needed to, we needed to get out of there, basically. You appreciate and value good timekeeping in your global rock stars. <laughs> Tell you who was there, funny enough, and uh, now... Uh, Christy Moore, I know. Now, I wouldn't say we were VIP'd up, Rich. You know what I mean? Back, of course, but we, we you, had, course you were. We were a little bit, rem- we were a little bit removed from the. From I'd the, say you were. <laughs> no VIP. I can assure you, there was there was no. I think that's what no VIP, VIP is, Kenny. But few cocktail sausages, maybe getting handed around. That was it, maximum. But um, yeah, I remember looking over my shoulder and um, Christy Moore there was in the car. And the lads would have loved. I mean, the lads still, absolutely yeah. still do would have loved them. You know what I mean? Would have had Christy up in a pedestal. And funny enough, very to the point where. I think we we're all a bit reluctant to go over and all right, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, really do you know what I mean? Good. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, just give him a. He give must him have distance. been in a few times to the camp, was he? No, Chris. Into the rugby team a bit, I think. Yeah, no, no, Christy never. Shame, really. Like the lads would have absolutely loved it, and we were lucky. Brian done that a um, couple of times. He brought um, Christy Diggin and Aslan came in. <clears throat> oh, yeah. um, uh, uh, Paul Brady. Paul Brady yeah, yeah. came in and played into the po- this uh, po- hotel in Pont Marnock, set up in the room. All the lads uh, came down and they banged away a couple of times. That was Brian, I think. They'd done a favour for him because Brian would have a related... You, you, know, you know Brian obviously loves, loves his music, music etc. Yeah. yeah. So he done great, Brian. Got the lads in. That was brilliant. Um, yeah, seeing them play. And not just live, but up close. You know what I mean, Rich? In the same room. Yeah. Back to touched tight to these lads. Yeah, brilliant. Did you hear... So the music for sure, but I know, for instance, the rugby team would have had Harrington in and apparently his words had a big effect on Johnny Sexton back in the day and even Eddie O'Sullivan got um, Marvin Hagler in to speak to the rugby team believe it or not did you ever have sports people come in and talk to you? No I, no, I never remember that no I never remember any one individual having a kind of a general uh, conversation yeah, it's interesting. I, I think, I mean, the music one's an easy one, uh, lads, isn't it, Rich? You know, you come in, the, you know, the music, you're onto a winner there, you know what I mean? There's no kind of downside. I always feel it might be a little bit kind of hit and miss when you when you bring a few of them lads in, as much as, like, you know, Padraig and uh, especially the, uh, the Irish sportsmen, as I said, we'd have them on a, on a, on a high kind of pedestal. They're hugely admired, but you're never quite sure individuals what you're going to take from it. You know, I'm always... I'll, 
I always ne- never quite sure of that one uh, to be honest I can understand it to, to, to some extent I think the fact that they're there and they're prepared to yeah. put, give their time and they want to share and I think that's all a, a good thing don't get me wrong and I suppose if a couple of individuals really kind of a kind of hits, hits home in terms you're mentioning Sexton there maybe something really got kind of through to him and triggered something that might have been may not have been the case with the other players they might have been oh it was great to have Padre here it was brilliant type thing but maybe you know, he got through a little, maybe to sex and one or two others in terms of what he was well, saying. But yeah, I, th- I think it was especially around the place kicking because there's a real parallel with pulling the trigger on a golf shot. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. Kicking the mentality that goes yeah, in. So yeah. I think he took a lot from it. Uh, I think that's great though, and I think we should do as much as that as we can. Air, air sports people, we should be all in. You know, all the rugby's prevalent at the moment, isn't it? You, uh, you know that, Joe. In terms of how well that we're playing, everybody kind of wants a piece of them. I know it was a couple of the lads are pitching up. It was a Henry Shefflin? I saw a picture of him and a couple of coaches, different sports and codes arriving, just having conversations and having a. I think that's all good. Like you know what yeah. I mean. And if it's not for you, you can take it with a pinch of salt. You don't have to take any of the advice to heart. Uh, Larry O'Reilly in Cork says, "Really, your program about musical instruments reminds me of my cousin Noel O'Reilly, RIP, ah. former assistant to Brian Kerr, great man with a guitar, especially during the underage era of European success." Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I should have mentioned Noel. I was thinking, obviously, focused on the players, yeah. and Noel worked alongside Brian. Yeah, loved his music. Yeah, very talented as well. Uh, tell me this: was BK a man to get up and sing? No, don't remember Brian uh, pitching up. Yeah, fierce competition though. No, fierce competition. That's <laughs> for the mic. Now I don't remember Brian now. Okay, <coughs> that could be interesting. See, I'd say the uh, what would you do? A little gravelly number, a little. Uh... It'd be more of a Bob Dylan. I could see Brian doing a bit of Bob Dylan. Yes, I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> Uh, the news round, which we should get into, is brought to you with Gillette Labs. Get the ultimate shave or your money back. Neon Night Edition available now. <coughs> uh, we're here again. This is now full on saga, Richie. It is indeed, and it's shown no signs of going away. But the GEA say Virgin Media were given every opportunity to bid for broadcast rights for inter-county matches. Yesterday, the independent broadcaster claimed the GEA did not put the package left vacant by Sky out to tender. However, the GEA say Virgin were contacted about a potential bid first in 2021 and then again last year, but no bid was forthcoming. The GEA also say they will conduct a comprehensive review of GEA Go at the end of the current season. The Oireachtas Committee on Tourism, Sport and Media will invite the GEA, RTE and Virgin Media to a pair of meetings following the controversy. One meeting will involve sporting bodies only and the second will have representatives from RTE, TG Car, Virgin Media and Sky. Mm. Where do you think this is all going, Rich? Uh, I think we're going to have long and lengthy discussions and like you know yourself at these Oireachtas subcommittee meetings, everybody will get questions in and nothing will really be solved from it uh, whenever that happens. Um, I think it will quietly begin to die out from this period on. I'd be interested to see if there's a response from Ballymount to that GEA statement today, which is very fact-filled and very forthright mm. in its presentation, um, given the, the nature of the press release that came yesterday. Um, but I can see this from this point on. I think this is where the, the wave breaks and begins to, to roll back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Will is going to pop in later on and just take us through uh, the statement in a bit more detail and the goings-on over the last 24 hours or so. Uh, we did have a request in to speak with Declan McBennett of RTE and his schedule didn't allow for it this evening, but hopefully we catch up at some stage in the next few days. Uh, Eamon on YouTube, The Cure played the RDS in July 1989. That was the gig of the year. And Jason in Dublin, Kenny has some number of stories on his fingertips. T- Any chance of him writing a book? Jason, oh, not, not a there is no more chance of him writing I a book. I couldn't <laughs> fill 10, pa- I'd be struggling to fill 10 pages. Let alone, let, alone, let alone 200 Kenny, plus. you'd be doing volume two you, and volume three. Telling you, it's a fact. It's a fact. A couple of little tidbits here and there. Forget it. Joe. You've already given Not more tidbits happen. on off the ball over the last couple of years than I would say the vast majority of very, very average football biographies that I've read. There's nothing in them. I don't think you realise how bad the standard is. <laughs> it's a very it's a low, low bar. bar. Is that it's the best compliment you can bar. pay me? It's a very low yeah, bar. It's a low you bar. You clear a very low bar. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's just. Low bar. Just. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. That art- it's not happen. You still get that artistic, uh, you know, tax exemption if you put a book out. Does that still exist? Oh, I is think that right? so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, is that yeah. right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. One of the great ironies was that Frank Lampard called his book Totally Frank. It wasn't. <laughs> that was a waste of a Christmas present. <laughs> no, it's a low standard. I th- you see, you, you wouldn't, I, I think you would have a great loyalty to the dressing room. And I understand that. But you'd be able to, be, you've great recall. Anytime we bring oh. up any random topic, 
No, you say, no. I don't, this is how it starts. You say, I don't, off air, let me just tell you how every topic goes. Kenny off air says, I'm not talking about that. I'm not to say about that. I'm, you can ask me, I'm not to say. <laughs> no, Joe, you're exactly Fast forward an hour later. And he's got loads to say. You, suddenly, when you get going, the recall is no, incredible. No, no, it isn't, Joe. It really isn't. I, I do kind of, uh, it would be a little bit of a struggle for me. I've had a, I, I, funny enough, had an, an email uh, recently, somebody, I, I can't remember, a median in, in Ireland asking about interview just in terms of looking back, books you've read, you know, TV programmes, the, uh, the whole shebang. But, it really would take me a bit of time. I'd literally have to sit down and, you know, get some stuff down on yeah, print. That's and really called writing have to... a book, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, what, but that's just you're talking about spontaneous. Yeah, things pop into your head. Oh, yeah, easy. No, it's not. It really isn't. Obviously, an age thing to a certain extent, but I wish I had a memory, uh, better memory recall. So what's putting you off about writing the book is that you'd have to sit down and have a think and put stuff down on paper. <laughs> <laughs> it must be great for someone who's... If you write a book and you look at it and, you, you know, Rich, wherever somebody writes a few ghosts or whatever, Whatever it is, but you read through it and you think, Do you know what? I'm really happy with that. That's a real reflection of true to what I wanted to say, yeah. well balanced. And you know, something to put on the shelf and you think, I'm, you know, I'm really proud yes, of that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm guessing that's a nice feeling. But I don't, I don't read them. I don't read a lot of the sport. Very, I don't, I haven't re- read any to be honest with you. Biographies, autobiographies, I kind of stay away from. Particularly like you're saying starts getting into that kind of storytelling let's go into the dressing room I'll tell you a story when we were wee on the town and yeah that wouldn't interest me at all if it's a sportsman talking about his sport and he's got some strong opinions about this that and mm. and yeah yeah may, maybe so but generally speaking they wouldn't you know when I go into a bookshop you know I wouldn't you know they wouldn't hold me attention if I'd say well, it's, it's tr- and we have to say it's very rare that Kenny doesn't come into the office without a book by the way there's always something yeah, on the go like there reading. Can. you do like reading yeah, fits and starts. Yeah, I can quite. It's a binge thing with me. When I go, I literally go. I can go yeah. for like six months a year. And I think most, I think most people are like that. It. It's, it's really? definitely. Oh, I think most people are. It's a habit that you get into and get out of easily enough. Dave and Bray says Kenny's cookbook, a no brainer Xmas present. <laughs> Kenny's recipes. You do a Kenny's recipes. Recipes. Oh, I'm not a cook. <laughs> I'd love to cook. I'd love to <laughs> be a better cook. cook. Why you should, you pastry should, chef. You should, Let, let's yeah. get a pastry chef. If I could, one wish, if I could shut my eyes this morning and wake up, forget about playing a musical instrument now, that's, that's been... That's gone, is it? That pastry. dream is gone. If I could yeah. get up in the morning and start cooking cakes, baking cakes to a high standard, whoosh. Kenny sees patisserie. That'd I can it. see it right now. Okay. Yeah. Would you not just go on... Uh, you wouldn't see me again, John. Not go on you wouldn't YouTube. see me again. Go on YouTube and you have every recipe at your fingertips, no? You could get stuck into the cooking. Uh, a last one on this, anonymous text in. Does Kenny have any book recommendations, sports or otherwise? Um, from um, yeah, it doesn't have to be recent. Yeah, do you know what? I, yeah, I, I, one would I um I've stumbled into really, and like I said, I don't. I'm not a great. Oh, I'm a big reader and oh, deep knowledge of this and that. I just literally pick up books and and read and put them down. I've lost a lot of the books I've read to be honest, which I haven't got them. But the last one that really hit me and really kind of oh my god, it was John McGurn. Oh yeah. Um, we're talking about that yeah it, yeah is 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 la- um 2000 i can't remember the last one that he published the sunset i think it was a, again i can't even remember the the title of it but it's an absolutely beautiful book one of the few books that cuz i read quite quick it's just a bit like a bit like a eat <laughs> and talk <laughs> yeah so i read quite quick but that's one of the very few books very quickly when i got into the book i thought i'm 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 going to slow down here i don't want to get through this that quickly savour it yeah it was that good felt myself getting drawn in and it's like the book it's uh, people know who've read it and it's you know it's country life yeah. you know what I mean it's simple rural rural learning, yeah, yeah. community relationships you know not, not no mad stuff uh, uh, going on but um, yeah really really drew me in and literally had to put the brakes on because I thought I want to enjoy this every mm. single mm. Uh, page, page of it so well that's a very respectable recommendation uh, we should get to Milan. So here we go, Richie. Yeah, much as they did 20 years ago, exactly. AC Milan and Inter meet in the semi-finals of the Champions League tonight. No Rafael Leao for Milan tonight. He has failed a fitness test. They're working on him through to this afternoon, but an abductor injury has ruled the Portuguese international out of action this evening. He's not even in their match day squad. So Mike Menyon starts in goal for them. A back four of Davide Calabria, Simon Scher, Ficayo Tomori and Theo Hernandez. In midfield there, it's Radek Kronic, Sandro Tonali and Ishmael Banasser. Up front then, a trio of Alexis Sel- 
Venezuela makers, Brahim Diaz and frontman Olivier Giroud. A 3-5-2 for Inter, Andre Anana in goal for them tonight. Matteo Darmian, Francesco Acerbi and Alessandro Bastoni are their back three. Across the middle then, from right to left, it's Denzel Dumfries, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Hakan Chalhanoglu and Nicolo Barella, along with Federico Di Marco. And then Lautaro Martinez is in support of Edin Dzeko. Kickoff is at eight. At Chelsea, meanwhile, can move within a point of WSL leaders Manchester United tonight. There was a seven o'clock start to that one. Chelsea flying already in their game against Leicester. Guru Wrighton put them 1-0 up. They've doubled their advantage as well in the past few moments through Aaron Cuthbert. So a 2-0 lead for Emma Hayes' side. There's a half-seven start to the meeting of Brighton and Arsenal. There was a great piece by Jonathan Liu in the Independent at the weekend. He went over to Milan to get a sense of this rivalry. Loads of great colour. <laughs> like I haven't, given, I haven't given too much thought to the Milan derby Really, like you haven't given enough respect to Italian teams. Full stop. Perhaps because we were in this studio a couple of weeks ago, and you were <laughs> yeah. bemoaning the fact that we had to give any kind of time to the Inter Milan Benfica game. Basically, threw your hands in the air. What a load of rubbish that is! I stand by that. Fact, <laughs> fact, shame on you. I stand by that. Uh, the be- it, 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 perhaps one of the great pictures is. Uh, let me just double check. Matarazzi and Co- Rui Costa. Definitely Rui Costa. It is Mar- Matarazzi. So you yeah. know when all the fireworks are going off in the distance and Matarazzi is leaning on Rui Costa's shoulder looking at them. Have you seen that photo? Not sure I have. I'll show you an amazing. Yeah. It's just, it's iconic. But um, Jonathan Liu was over in Milan and so like it's a very, very friendly rivalry in so much as these things go. There's rarely violence after matches of the serious kind and right. it doesn't go along geographical lines it's not the west of the city oh, versus the east or inner city versus the suburbs yeah. you'll have brothers and sisters supporting opposite teams mm. husband and wives uh, so it's, it's a complete mesh and just falls along more random uh, circumstances and he was talking to a club employee in uh, at AC Milan who on the basis of anonymity uh, said we don't have a chance our only hope to stop Inter winning the Champions League is Pep so AC Milan not optimistic at all this evening yeah, no, yeah, no. I make Inter, I make Inter favourites, but I think of that. Um, so when I think of AC Milan, Inter again, generational thing again, isn't it? I think back to those great AC Milan. So AC Milan, we know uh, uh, Gillet Van Bass and all of them, Rich um, Bo, uh, Bo, uh, load, loaded in there, Ancelotti, that kind of great Milan team, Barese. But then Inter Milan, if you remember, do you remember like Lothar Mateus? Uh, Klinsmann, Brainer. Andy Brain, we had that German yeah. connection which kind of drove that. Ricardo Ferrari, Giuseppe Bergami, yeah, amazing team. Yeah, yeah drove that Inter uh, Milan team of the time and they were like phenomenal uh, teams. So I'd have those kind of pictures in my head. This is a little bit different now, this kind of present crop, obviously, and the kind of games changed, uh, changed a little bit. Maybe not, not as many of those real kind of strong, kind of forceful uh, personalities around. So, But I still, yeah, I make Inter Milan favour. just think they're in a better place at the moment than AC. Funny enough, they're both fighting tooth and nail for that kind of Champions League spot at the moment. Mm. Fourth and fifth, I think, are they in the in a Serie A? A couple of surprises. Um, uh, Lukaku not playing has really surprised me. Him and Martinez have just hit it off yeah. of late. Just felt as if that uh, partnership was coming together at the right time. He's parked uh, Lukaku on the bench tonight and put um, put Dzeko in. And even Brozovic, uh, central midfield. That's, that's a big surprise. Going with Chanelou, uh, Chanelou and, and Mkhitaryan in there as well with Barella. Not really one kind of defence-minded player in centre midfield. But yeah, even still, with Liao missing, obviously, yeah, yeah. I, I, I give them a significant advantage. A terrible radio this. Excuse me a moment. That's the photo there. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. If you're at home and you're not familiar, Matarazzi Rui Costa photo and it'll come up. There's other football on the evening, Rich? Uh, yes indeed as I mentioned Chelsea tune it up in the WSL at home to Leicester Brighton taking on Arsenal from half past seven uh, there's also action this evening the semi-finals of the Leinster under 20 hurling championship both of these have reached half time there were 6.45 starts to them both uh, UPMC Nolan Park Wexford lead Kilkenny by nine points to five and in Tullamore Offaly lead Dublin by 12 points to one four and just as a last story because the clock is against us uh, the IRFU held uh, media day today 
Oh yeah, big style. The IRFU CEO Kevin Potts says all recommendations from December's Women in Rugby report have been or will be implemented. Speaking at a progress report in Abbottstown today, Potts said by September more than a third of the union's senior management will be female and they remain committed to 40% female representation on the union committee by year's end. He also pointed to Amory Hughes' recent appointment as head of equity, diversity and inclusivity, which Potts said will help ensure Irish rugby is as safe, inclusive as well and welcoming as is possible. Some of the questions put to today related to that Telegraph article published before Ireland's Women's Six Nations defeat to Italy last month. While admitting sexism is a societal issue which often touches on rugby, Potts said it's not one that is a problem within the IRFU currently. He was also asked about the who gives an F about women's rugby comment by a prominent figure quoted in the Telegraph. So I, I guess in my response to the article, obviously we nobody likes negative crit- criticism. Um, but the, the alleged statement by uh, somebody at the dinner certainly doesn't represent the views or the, the, the position of anybody involved in the IRFU that I'm working with or in the wider union committee. Um, I do accept for sure, we, I think we need to communicate better. Um, I think we need to communicate what our organisation is truly like, which is far more diverse, inclusive than is portrayed by some. Um, so I, I was disappointed with the article and I was disappointed that it, it gives an impression in relation to, to I, the IRFU that simply isn't the case. But the comments are not reflective of, of what we stand for, for sure. OK, we are out of time. Kenny is staying with us. Richie, thank you. Nice and lads. Cheers, Cheers Rich.